Today we're going to talk about the difference between carbon steel and stainless steel. A lot of people have preconceived notions about some of these different steels. And the carbon steel one is the one we'll start with here. Carbon steel is a steel that will rust. That's, what, that's really what makes it different from stainless steel. Carbon steel has added carbon to it, which makes it different from mild steel. The carbon portion of that steel is what allows that steel to harden and be useful in a knife blade. Mild steel, for example, where you do ornamental iron work or maybe use it on bridges and stuff like that, doesn't have a carbon content. The one drawback to carbon is it can make a knife brittle or it can make any other kind of steel brittle when heat treated improperly. 52100 has 1% carbon. That's what the 100 at the back of that is. The 1045 has 0.45% carbon. So when you're looking at a steel breakdown, those last numbers determine your carbon content. Now, what makes carbon great in a knife blade is it gives it its wear resistance. But the harder that blade is, the less toughness you have. And that's what's really cool about 52100 ball bearing steel that we use in our knives. That 52100 has a high, high toughness level, but still has a really high hardness level. This is something that we need to determine when we look at what that blade's gonna be used for. Is that blade used for chopping and bending or prying? Or is that blade maybe in the chef's knife, like in a chef's knife situation, just in the kitchen, just cutting? So if you're doing a lot of chopping or bending or prying, you wanna have a higher toughness level. You know, the, the less toughness that you need, the harder that blade can be, which helps with your wear resistance. And so we're always looking for a nice balance. There's a lot of uses for carbon steel in industry. And quite frankly, a lot of the knife companies out there have been using steels that were actually made for other reasons in industry, such as ball bearing steel, which is used for ball bearings. There's a lot of other carbon steels out there like a W2 or W1, which are water hardening steels. We use oil hardening steels like a 52100. There's also steels in like spring manufacturing for old cars, the 5160 and steels like that. Those lower carbon content levels like in a 5160 make a great steel for springs in a car because they need more toughness and less wear resistance. Unlike a ball bearing, which needs way more wear resistance and a little bit less toughness. There's actually three levels of carbon steel. A lot of people don't quite understand that. There's a low carbon, a mid or medium carbon, and a high carbon. High carbon is really what we need for knives you know, at some of those lower levels of carbon where you get into like 5160 spring steel, you're really walking the high range of that, of that medium carbon steel and then, the, and then the low range of a high carbon steel. But typically with a 1095, a 1084, 52100, you're always walking up into that higher level of carbon content for steel. There is some drawbacks to carbon steel though. Rusting. Rusting is your number one biggest drawback. Also, that steel can be brittle if heat treated improperly. So that's why you don't use high carbon steel in like a bridge building scenario where that bridge is flexing. You need a lot more toughness in a, in a situation like that. There are some advantages to high carbon steel though over a stainless steel. High carbon steel is actually much less expensive. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than the high tech stainless steels that are out there. The other thing for knife making, for those of you who like to watch Forged and Fire make knives in your garage, High carbon steel can be forged relatively easily and heat treated easily. So you can make Damascus steel with high carbon steel much easier than you can with stainless. There definitely is Damascus steel out there that is stainless, but it takes a lot higher tech equipment, a lot more training, a lot more heat, and it's a lot more finicky with those high temperatures without ruining that steel. The last thing to consider when you're choosing a stainless steel blade versus a carbon steel blade quite frankly, is the looks. Some people love that high polish, mirror polish. You just can't beat stainless steel when it comes to a mirror finish. That being said, the carbon steel, you can really put a neat hand rub finish on it if you're a custom knife maker. We use a parkerizing process, which actually turns our blades black. And the reason we do that is it's not actually as much for looks as it is to help keep that blade from rusting. So when you use a parkerizing process, it actually attacks that steel like rust does, but in a more controlled way, turning that steel black and actually allows you to have to do less maintenance in the end. That being said, the final drawback again with carbon steel is it does take some more maintenance compared to stainless steel. Our blade wax that we sell on our website is a great thing to have for anything that's anywhere from mild steel to high carbon steel, your gun barrels, 
any of your parts and pieces that come on any of your equipment, you can put that wax on there and keep your parts on your, on your equipment from rusting. The next thing to talk about is stainless steel. Stainless steel must have more than 10.5% chromium. There again, the chromium is actually what makes that blade stainless. The chromium is actually doing a lot like what rust does with carbon steel. When the chromium hits the oxygen, it actually for, forms an oxide layer, but it's a chromium oxide layer as opposed to a rust layer. That chromium layer is what that silver finishes on the outside. The higher the chromium content of a steel, the more stain resistant it is. ABL that will be coming out in our chef's knives is very highly, highly rust resistant. Uh, there's a lot of other stainless steels out there that just barely qualify for that stainless level, but I'd really call those more of a steel that's easier to maintain, but it's not necessarily just full on stainless where you don't have to maintain that steel at all. So why do we care if a stainless steel is stainless? Well, it really comes down to a couple things. One is looks. It takes very low maintenance. It always looks great. You kind of know what you're going to get. I personally love those carbon steel blades that get that patina on them and show the history of what that blade's been through over its life, kind of like an old gun barrel or an old leather mitt. I just love that texture and, and I love that character that it has. Stainless steel is mostly used in commercial kitchen environments, cooking, food prep, stainless steel pots, stainless steel pans, stainless steel knives, spatulas, all that stuff you really don't want to see rusting instruments and to cooking tools being used in a commercial kitchen. In your personal kitchen, you can do a little bit more maintenance. You can take care of a carbon steel blade, but let's face it, it's just easier to maintain a stainless steel blade in the kitchen. Stainless steel is also very heat resistant, which is great in industry. Actually, some of the processes that we do in the shop with our parkerizing or our salt heat treatments use stainless steel for that reason. It doesn't decarburize, it doesn't wear out. It really lasts for a long, long time in the shop. So in conclusion, there's a few drawbacks and a few advantages to carbon steel and stainless steel. Carbon steel, very tough, easy to sharpen, easy to work if you're a knife maker, pretty inexpensive, but it does rust. That's the big drawback. Stainless steel, very difficult to work if you're a knife maker, very expensive to purchase. However, you don't have to do much maintenance and it makes a great blade in the end, especially if you choose MagnaCut, which is what we choose to use for our stainless blades.